Hello book lovers! Today I'm doing Top 10 Tuesdays, which is a weekly meme hosted by the Broken the Bookish blog, and I'm going to put a link to this week's post down in the TARDIS. It's bigger on the inside. So this week's topic is Top 10 Books That Feature Travel in Some Way. So, yep, let's get started. Number one, An Abundance of Catherines by John Green. Honestly, this only features travel for like the first, I don't know, 30 pages, maybe not even. Um, but to me, this is a road trip story, and it's just, it's whatever. It's John Green. Honestly, I didn't have enough uh, travel books, so I put this one in there. Yep, but it's really good. Number two, Two Way Street by Lauren Barnholt. This is actually one of my favorite favorite contemporary young adult novels ever. Um, I read it quite a long time ago when it first came out and it's about this girl who is supposed to travel across country uh, with her boyfriend because they're going off to school together but then they break up right before they have to go and they still take the trip together but she still likes him and it's just awkward and amazing and I love it. And there's actually a companion novel coming out uh, sometime this summer. I don't remember the date but I'm like beyond excited. This came out seriously years ago and there's a companion novel just coming out now so that is really cool and I really like Lauren Barnholt for a contemporary YA. She's fun. Yep. Number three, Saving June by Hannah Harrington. This book was wonderful. This was Hannah's debut novel and it's about a girl whose older sister dies and she steals her sister's ashes and goes on this road trip to scatter her ashes in California and she takes with her a boy who knew her sister, has some mysterious connection to her sister. She doesn't really know how he knows her, um, but he does, and he offers to take her, so it's really good. Really, really. Number four, In Honor by Jesse Kirby. Uh, very similar, this girl's brother dies, and she's trying to honor his wishes by taking this cross-country road trip to California, and she takes with her her brother's best friend. And it's cute. Like, really. Number five. Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson, also one of my favorite contemporary YAs ever, about a girl whose dad has died and she has and her mother are moving to Connecticut. I, mm, I I don't know where they start out from. I'm pretty sure they're moving to Connecticut, but anyway, uh, and her mom goes ahead without her for work and she comes later, and so her mom has gotten this friend of the family, this boy that's her age, to drive her there. And come on, it's so good. So good. I think a lot of people have talked about this on book two, but I love this book so, so, so much. And are you seeing a pattern with all the people die and then someone goes on a road trip because of it? Yeah. Uh, for school, we have to write this big, long, critical thesis about whatever we want to, whatever, blah, blah, anything we want having to do with children's literature. And I really considered writing about road trip novels where somebody dies and then somebody goes on a road trip and it like heals them because there's a lot of these books and I love these books. I'm a sucker for that so. I don't think I've had enough coffee today. I just got home from work at 4.30 and I'm tired. I had some energy candy. Did you know there's energy candy? It's good. It's like those little like fizzy candy, hard candies that have like fizz inside them. I used to love those except they're energy. They work pretty good but um, they haven't worked yet and I have some iced coffee because I'm dragging here. It is like taking a lot of energy for me to like keep it keep it snappy because these videos run too long so I have to talk faster. That's the solution, talk faster. Yum. Okay, uh, where was I? Number six. The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight by Jennifer E. Smith. I think a lot of people have also talked about this one on, uh, on YouTube but it's very adorable and um, it's not a road trip story. This one just takes place in an airport, at least the first half, and it's it's cute. It's not... I was disappointed by the second half when they leave the airport. I honestly thought the whole book was going to take place in the airport and that part was like so good. I just loved it. Because I love airports and I always think like you can do anything. You can go shopping, you can eat, you can like, you can get a massage, you can do like whatever and it'd be fun to just like hang out in an airport, I think. I don't know. I just love airports because everyone's like coming and going and I don't like people like I don't really like to be in like crowds like that especially when people are like cranky and people are generally cranky when they're traveling um like a lot of people but then other people are excited and I'm usually excited. I try not to be cranky about it even though it just it's been harder and harder to travel and prices are more expensive and it's just a pain in the butt now but I don't know airports have always just kind of made me really really happy since I was a kid so there you go. Number six. 
Instructions for a Broken Heart by Kim Culbertson. I love this author. Love. Her first novel was Songs for a Teenage Nomad. And then there's this one. And then um, she wrote a novella, uh, The Liberation of Max McTrue. I think that's what it's called. It was really cute. Um, all of her books are wonderful, and I hope she writes some more soon because she doesn't have that many out. And whatever. Anyway, um, this is about a girl who goes on a class trip to Italy, and she's trying to get over her boyfriend who dumped her, I think. It's been a really long time since I read it, but, um, okay, her boyfriend was cheating on her, so she dumped him, but whatever. Anyway, so she's trying to get over him, and it's fun. And now for my last three. I didn't really have a ton of travel novels that I've read, um, even though I love I love travel in my books, um, and I do, I have more than this, but I just didn't love the other ones, so I don't really want to show them as my top ten, so instead I'm going to put three more that um, are on my TBR pile that involve travel that I really want to read, so. Number eight, Reunited, though I have no idea who wrote this, like, at all. Reunited by Hilary Wiseman Graham. Yep, um, I haven't heard anything about this author, I'm pretty sure this is her debut novel, but I could be totally wrong, I don't know. But it's about three best friends who grew up together, they were always best friends, and then they stopped being best friends. And then they go on a road trip together when they graduate, I think. Um, basically I picked it up because even though I love road trip novels and that makes me always want to pick stuff up, but this sounds exactly like Crossroads. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm pretty old compared to a lot of you, so I don't know. Let me know. Has anyone seen Crossroads? It's a movie with Britney Spears, and it's amazing. It's a road trip movie about these three best friends. I, I mean so good. I could watch that movie a thousand times. I think I have watched it a thousand times. Has anyone else seen it? Anyway, this sounds exactly like that. So yeah, I really want to read it. And seriously, has anyone seen Crossroads? Please let me know down in the comments. Thanks. Number nine, Just One Day by Gail Foreman. I love Gail Foreman and um, I think a lot of people have talked about this on YouTube as well. I haven't read it yet, but it's about a girl who goes to somewhere. England? London? Same thing? Not same thing. Don't get offended. Um, London, I think whatever, and, um, for a school field trip and meets a boy for just one day, and then, but I don't know. I don't know what happens. I want to read it. I want to read it before the companion novel, Just One Year, comes out, because that's coming out, I think, at the end of this year, so I need to read this. And number ten, Perfect Escape by Jennifer Brown. I've had this on my shelf since it came out. It is about a girl who goes on a road trip with her brother who has OCD. I don't remember why they're going on a road trip, and I'm not going to look, but I just read Thousand Words, her newest novel, and I loved it. And Hateless has been on my shelf forever, and I haven't read it, but I'm going to because it sounds really good. I also read her second novel, Bitter End, about an abusive relationship, and I have a, I really have, like, a bone to pick with YA novels about abusive relationships, so I wasn't a huge fan of that one. But I really loved Thousand Words, and so this sounds really good, too. So there. Yep. Okay. I'm done. Yay! Coffee might be kicking in a little bit. Those are my top ten novels things involving travel in some way so you guys should let me know yours and yep you can make a video response or you can uh, post it and link it up to the broken the bookish again link to that will be down in the TARDIS and bye that's all bye now go read